Hey everybody, this is Grim, and uh, Ender is with me here. This is our first episode of our brand new show, The Fleet Builders. Um, this is, of course, a Star Jump production. We're excited to to finally do this show. It's something we've talked about for a while. Uh, we've been waiting though uh, for us to have a tool that would allow us to do this show the way we wanted. And finally, uh, we are using the, if you're watching this today, the brand new, just released today, Star Jump Fleet Viewer. Um, really excited to get that out. It is obviously a new, exciting, high fidelity way to view your fleets, uh, manage fleets, and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're watching this video and you want to check out the Fleet Viewer for yourself, uh, just go to starjumpfleetviewer.com or hangar.link and you will find it there. Um, there is a tutorial video on there, um, and it's 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 fun to explore and just get your hands um, kind of dirty with it. Um, you can create and generate uh, really nice 4K uh, background wallpapers, and you'll see us using the Fleet Viewer through today's show. Um, so mm-hmm. with me, as always, is Ender. Ender, tell us a little bit about what uh, the Fleet Builders is. So the Fleet Builders was created as a mental exercise for uh, Grim and I, uh, and we liked doing it so much that we decided, you know, we're going to, we're going to record this and, and let the community kind of join with us and do this with us. Uh, and we build fleets based on emergent gameplay. Yeah. So every week uh, ourselves or you guys, our viewers are going to assign parameters and limitations to the fleet uh, and see how each of us and hopefully you guys uh, build fleets for these fleet rules. Um, and this this kind of started because we would have these conversations anyway. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We, yeah. we before we even had the fleet viewer, we would have these conversations whether it was on Star Jump Station or just privately. Yep. And it and, and you know we felt like other people probably had these same sort of questions. So I'll go ahead and put out there a lot of what we're going to talk about and theory craft and stuff is you know we're we're taking some speculative leaps here sometimes not all this stuff is in game and won't be for a while um but that's that's part of the fun of the star you know the star excuse me the star citizen um kind of theory crafting game you know what i mean it's it's taking some leaps there so and for all we know the thoughts that we're currently having could change in the future but we're basing it off of the information we have and a little bit of uh what we're hoping for in the future too right um Great. So should we get started? Uh, what we're going to do is each episode, we are going to have a set of parameters, as Ender said. Essentially, um, a problem is set or a or a theme is set or a, um, you know, maybe it's a bit of story driven kind of RP setup. Whatever these parameters, however they are delivered, there's going to be a set of parameters that we have to build this, to, you know, the fleet to. Um, so Ender, do you want to tell us what the uh, parameters for this episode is? So this week's parameters, <laughs> uh, we figured we would start kind of with a Kraken. Yep. Uh, it's one of Grimm's favorite ships. So yep. uh, we came up with the idea, a maximum of 50 people in an org, uh, centered. Uh, the fleet is centered around a non-privateer Kraken, yep. uh, and this Org has been asked to assist a smaller org uh, in Pyro with combat support and industrial mining services. Uh, And we said, all right, how would you build your fleet? We took uh, a day and we built a a fleet based around this information. Yeah, so... um it, a lot of times we're going to frame things, like I said, in that kind of emergent gameplay or role play kind of setup. And in this setup, you know, um, we're in a fleet. We have 50 people at our disposal. We have a smaller fleet way out or a smaller org, excuse me, way out in Pyro. They need someone's help, uh, both in protection services, combat services, combat support. But also, they need help with their, getting their mining operation off the ground and, and pushing forward and making a little revenue. It's obviously, um, as the larger org that's agreed to help this smaller org, it's in our best interest to try to maximize their profitability uh, with mining and yet at the same time protect not only their assets, but our assets through combat support. So using um, our entire org, which we're labeling at 50 people for the sake of this episode, we've got to figure out how many ships, what kind of ships, 
um, we can take. Now, a couple rules on this. Some ships have a crew range. Um, so let's say a ship may have a crew range of 6 to 10. We're always going to shoot for the median. Um, yep. So we'll consider that ship requiring eight people to fully operate. Um, we felt that was better than going with the minimum or the maximum based off future gameplay um, uh, you know, situations and how CIG kind of works all that out and a lot of unknowns that are there. So we kind of went for the median crew count on ships. And there's a few areas where ships, we can get creative with how that crew, crew is dispersed throughout the mm-hmm. fleet. One of the primary things that we talked about, Nender, maybe you can expand on this, is we wanted to make sure that if the entire fleet did need to kind of bug out, it could be reasonably manned and all the ships leave at once without any getting left behind. What we mean by that is essentially we wanted to have uh, a carrier, I guess, a space for most of the ships. Now, You'll see that we have creatively dealt with that, both of us, uh, in this first episode. But uh, we have a majority of our carriers, our fleet, is able to be carried out via a carrier of some sort. Um, With maybe one or two stragglers that would have to do it a little slower, but can still make that leap. Um, So we wanted to essentially have that ability to move them out quick. And at the end, once we've shown off both of our fleets, explained our reasoning behind some of those decisions, um, we'll make sure that, uh, you know, we label what the advantages and disadvantage of both fleets would be. So um, without further ado, Ender, do you want to kind of go ahead and and get started with your makeup and how you would tackle um, that set of parameters, which would be helping out a smaller org and some sort of sort of a militia industrial support role for our org. 50 player limit to our org um, crew count in terms of total crew count. And we would be focusing on combat support and mining support as well. Absolutely. So <clears throat> I went... Uh... Uh, I wouldn't say heavy into the fighters. Uh, I actually spent a little bit more on uh, uh, my carrier fleet than maybe I could have or should have. Uh, So I broke mine down into squadrons. Uh, Essentially, my initial squadron is my dagger squadron here. Um, I appreciate you naming it after me. (laughs) <laughs> uh dagger was grim's uh name in uh um, my arma three name uh arma three uh so dagger squadron is comprised of two liberators uh a kraken obviously that's the center of this fleet uh and three argo mpuv cargos um now <clears throat> I know it says 15 here, uh, but if you were to count each individual person, it would probably be 17, except the Liberator does take two people. We did go max with the Liberators and the Krakens. Mm -hmm. Um, And with the Liberator, uh, we went max because they would need an engineer. Now, anytime that an engineer is not being utilized, the Argo Cargo would be what that engineer is flying. So that's why I went with 15 for that initial group. Right. So I've got my carriers. I decided to go up and build my uh, fighter squadrons. So I've got Nightmare, Sandman, and Reaver. Nightmare and Sandman are essentially our <clears throat> heavy fighters and light, our medium fighters, excuse me. Uh, and they are built around protecting all of this. Uh, they're going to be mid to, to short range protectors. And then my Reaver squadron is my uh, capital assist squadron, as it were. I've got a uh, Ares Inferno with two Buccaneers. The reason for the two Bucks uh, is because they have a much higher firepower than my two Arrows, which I did put with the Inferno. Uh, correction, the Ion. Um, and the reason I put the Bucks with the Inferno is because that Inferno is going to have to get in close. The Ion is able to kind of snipe from farther away. Uh, so I put my medium defenses into, or my, my ship defenses into my heavy, medium, and light fighters. I didn't go with any capital-sized fighters uh, or, you know, s- larger size than, than, than just our fighters uh, for a reason that I'll explain in uh, uh, kind of my after action for this. Stuff like large ships, so like Hammerheads, Perseus. Hammerhead, stuff like that. Perseus, yeah, exactly. Uh, so then I went with my mining wing. Now my con- my consideration for this was they 
got a smaller org that's asking for mining assistance. They're probably, or combat and mining assistance, they're probably mostly miners. Uh, as in they will be mining as well. So I put my minimal into this. I put eight people into to mining uh, with a uh, MISC Odyssey, uh, two uh, um, prospectors, and an expanse. Uh, that Odyssey is able to um, turn any fuel, quantum, into you know quantum fuel, uh, and the expanse is able to do that as well. Uh, the Argo Cargo would take anything else uh, that's not being, you know, refined by our group here and uh, carrying it over to the Kraken for storage. A last wing was kind of the most important because they're going to be out there. We're going to need medical. We're going to need refueling. We're going to need repair and we're going to need rearming for our wing. So I went with... Um, oh, by the way, I'll, I'll go over my fighters in just a moment. But they're essentially Lightnings, F7As, uh, and F8 Lightnings. Right. Uh, because, man, it's a lot of firepower, and I feel like they'd be good violence of action. Sorry about that. Um, Spartan Squadron, Repair, Refuel, Medical Wing. I went with a uh, single Vulture, a Crucible, uh, for my repair, rearm, and uh, uh, refueling. Uh, small refueling, but I went with the Starliner for my refueling for Star the Fair. majority of the refueling. Starfare, thank you. I wow. make that mistake all the time too. I call it the Starliner <laughs> all the time. Star. <laughs> Actually, the Star I Fair. make the I make the mistake the opposite way. I call the Starliner the Starfare all the time, <laughs> which like, actually makes more sense for that particular it one. It kind of does, yeah. <laughs> it kind of does. But the Starfare, I went with it because half of its tanks are going to be able to be filled with hydrogen, half with quantum. Mm -hmm. So as they're doing the quantum and refilling everybody else, we can also have hydrogen being put in so that these guys can uh, not run out of fuel. Um, and then medical was vitally important, but I thought nothing more than an Apollo medevac was going to be needed. Uh, because, man, that Apollo is going to be kind of a beast of a ship. I think it's got two beds currently, but I got, an, I got a feeling that it's going to get a little bigger. Um, so I'm I'm kind of hedging a little bit of a bet on somewhat bigger, I, I but also... I thought the Apollo did two beds on each side, though. I thought it was four uh, that total. That might be correct. I think it's, it because I think, be it has, I think it has a center um, walkway with two you beds on each side. You are correct. Yeah. You are 100% correct. Yeah. Um, so four beds, which is even better. If a squadron gets taken down, they're going to survive. Now, I know some people are going to say that uh, my F7s, my F7As, could be manned by two people. Mm -hmm. Currently, the F7M, which is what I'm basing my current theory off of, uh, is Im immediately utilized by the pilot itself and then can be slaved to uh, co-pilot if necessary. Uh, my thought process is it's going to be single pilot because I'm never going to have a co-pilot in there. Uh, that gun is less useful to me, uh, in, in my opinion. Uh, otherwise, I would put Scorpius's and Hurricane's uh, in there if mm -hmm. I wanted two pilots. It's just a better single pilot ship, right? Um, which is why I built mine the way I did. Makes sense. Now, <clears throat> strengths and weaknesses for this. Um, the strength of this, in my opinion, is its ability to uh, move out quickly. Everything can be moved. Everything's got a space. Uh, or it can be the only thing that currently doesn't is the Crucible. Uh, it would be fueled by the Starliner, uh, correction, Starfare. Um <clears throat> And it, that would be easy to, to, you know, kind of pass along at the end. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I would say that the weakness for this, if they needed m more help, if it were a larger fleet coming after these typically 10 man uh, uh, or 10 to 15 man uh, crew that's mining, uh, I'm not going to be able to take on a much larger fleet. The Kraken's going to do its business. The Ares Star Line, or Star Fighters, excuse me, are going to do pretty decently, but too heavy of a fleet, and it's going to drop. So I think that 
I'm hedging on a smaller fleet and less of a fleet size, uh, you know, capital size ships coming uh, to give grief to these particular people. Um, and well, that's my fleet. So I, I think one interesting thing too about your fighter squadron, squadron makeup is um, – Obviously, you got a carrier so well suited to. Well, not only do you have the Kraken, you have two Liberators as backups. Now they don't have the repair, rearm, refuel capabilities of your Kraken, uh, but you still have a Vulcan and a, and, a, and a Crucible for that. But what's great about your fighter makeup and the size of those ships is they're all extremely well suited for the Kraken to service them. Yeah, and and, and that's really nice versus having a larger, um, a large ship like a Perseus, a Hammerhead, a Nautilus, anything like that. So that that's pretty great. The number of fighters you have is pretty good too, simply because you could have one fighter squadron assigned to your your mining wing. You could have a fighter squadron, um, you know, tasked with escorting individual repair, refuel, medical ships when they're ferrying all over, which they may not always be moving as a group. So being able right. to split fighters off to do that would be nice. And then you obviously have a wing of fighters um, stationed for um, capital defense, you know, centered around uh, the Kraken itself. Um so, so I think that's pretty smart. Um, again, it, your your the defense element you have within this fleet, I think, is well suited for the support ships you have in this fleet, which yeah. uh, you know, again, I think's good. Um, yeah, very well rounded. Very well rounded. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm pretty excited to see what you've built for your fleet, though. Cool. So well, let's get into let's it. get into yours. Um, yeah. So obviously the parameters, once again, um, militia operations, our org helping another smaller org that is currently stationed in Pyro. That smaller org needs combat support as well as mining support. Uh, us here are in an org of 50 people for the sake of this episode. And we had to center around a Kraken uh, as kind of our marquee ship. Um, so I took a little bit of a different route here. So Obviously, I have my Kraken in the center, uh, representing the you know the anchor of this fleet. Um, when it came to and, the, and and I usually like to start with defense and um, first. So when it came to defending the Kraken and thus the entire fleet, um, I really kind of leaned on two things. Um, the first thing I leaned on was the future. And we've seen this in, in Inside Star Systems before, but I've leaned on that whole scanning and signature gameplay that CIG has talked so much about. They talked a lot about how smaller fighters are really going to get hidden within larger capital signatures and in order to mask them, which can obviously be an advantage a lot of times. But I kind of wanted to go the opposite route. I wanted a big signature, um, which is like why I added ships like the Perseus and the Nautilus. I wanted big ship signatures because what I wanted was I wanted the 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 size of my signature to almost be a deterrent. Um, so any smaller fleets coming in and around me would scan me, see what's rolling with me, and immediately say, I'm not messing with that. Um, so, you know, part of it is, is um, you know, try, hopefully trying to like, you know, uh, scare off would-be attackers just through possible fleet size. The next thing I did was, was I looked at um, essentially some sort of perimeter defense, right? So using a Nautilus to set minefields around both uh, the mining envoy or the main fleet itself, um, not really to act as a minefield that would damage incoming um, attackers, but more as a minefield to be almost a um, sort of like a SOSIS net, you know what I mean? That when I see a mine start to move and start homing in on a target, it's less about damaging that target and knowing that, oh, we have a target coming in from way over here. We need to send our fighters out over there. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's kind of an early warning system um, is my Nautilus. The Perseus is that big gun to sit there and work in concert with my Kraken. Um, Use its uh, big cannons to complement the the Kraken's absolute massive array of turrets. When you combine these two ships with the proper crew count, you're really looking at just an unparalleled amount of firepower. Um, to me, this this two ship combo 
would vastly outstrip even the most daunting of enemy fleets. Uh, with the exception of a javelin, there's not much that would scare me with having a Kraken and Perseus working together. Um, so that's my perimeter defense group. Now, I had to pay for that perimeter defense. Both of these ships have a crew count of six on the on that medium end. So, you know, that ate up a lot of people, but it's a, it's a pretty critical role, and uh, I had no problem uh, putting those down. And again, they, they went towards that other goal of mine, which was having a big signature. Um, they're both slow-moving, heavily armored ships as well, so they go well with the Kraken in terms of fleet speed. Um, you know, another complementing factor. Um, now, going along with this perimeter defense, when something did trip the net, when some enemy ship did trip the net, I wanted to have a Aegis Eclipse um, always in wait, sitting out in the darkness, fully stealthed up. No one knows it's there. As soon as that perimeter mine field is tripped and a homing mine starts tracking in towards the target, this ship would immediately head to that location and be a first strike weapon um, with its massive torpedoes. It would be that first strike weapon that tries to hit the initial target. Whether that's a Connie sized ship, a, uh, a medium fighter, a heavy fighter, whatever, it's going to be that first strike uh, weapon. Now, followed closely behind that first strike defense would be my general fleet protection. Now, I went a little lean here. I went with two ships, uh, the Hurricane and the Scorpius, both with two people in it. Um, they're, they're very effective uh, combat craft, especially with a skilled crew. Um, they can really do the the work of you know four fighters in my opinion, uh, especially with a skilled crew. And um, I could see those ships really and and really being able to work together um, along with the minefields and any support the Perseus needs to give um, to the mining envoy. If these ships can't start uh, protecting the mining envoy, then some of these mining ships could head back to the Kraken. And and that's sort of my thing. Anytime uh, my refuel, rearm, repair group is out or my mining envoy is, go- is, is out there, um, if, if trouble comes while we have protection, I would expect them to start coming back to home base. And the reason is I would sort of want them to come and swarm the Kraken is because the Kraken will be surrounded by layers of, of uh, Tephra home meat mines. Um, it'll have a Perseus, um, next to it as well. So, um, you know, again, there, there's a lot of protection going on here. Um, now to, to work with this protection fleet here and to work with the Kraken, um, I added a Vanguard Sentinel to, um, do E-War, um, type tasking. So this may be radar jamming, scanning interference, um, general disruption and, and causing disarray to the enemy. Um, it could also join in on some of the dog fighting, obviously, as a, as a heavy fighter, but its primary role would to be that of harasser. Um, so if my Hurricane and Scorpius are dog fighting and in a tank and a hornet's nest with a couple of other fighters that come into the fray, enemy fighters, the van car would kind of get in there with them, maybe not be guns on target all the time, but get in there with them constantly messing with their scanners, their targeting systems, all that stuff. Now, going into the mining envoy here, um, I went pretty heavy because the entire reason we're there is to make a profit. Um, I need to get the smaller orgs numbers up. And again, relying on the idea that a large signature would hopefully scare off a lot of smaller attackers people in say redeemers or um you know heavy fighters or whatever um i'm hoping they would mostly stay away that gave me the ability to operate a pretty large fleet made up of a lot of single seat ships so the three prospectors and three expanses um that's only six a piece and then two in the mole uh, or two in each mole now that would not be using the mole at maximum capacity but it would be enough for a pilot and engineer and additional stations additional laser stations could be manned by the friendly org so the ship would be operational with its two person uh crew um but you know again additional people could come in 
um, from the other org to man additional lasers if needed. Yep. Um, so that being said, you know, having prospectors working directly with the expanse, working directly with the mole, they all share, share mining bags for refinement. So there's a great synergy here. And again, if any, at any given time, um, a larger ship comes into the fray, so let's say an enemy Perseus or, or, or something like that, an enemy Hammerhead, I would expect some of these ships or all of them to start heading back to the Kraken and sidling up next to it uh, for protection. Last but not least, um, well, actually not last, um, second to last year, I had my repair, rearm, refuel. Um, I went with two Vulcans with their four drones apiece. Um, that gives a lot of flexibility. One Vulcan could be assigned by a mining envoy, for example, and assigned to the mining envoy, and its drones could be servicing multiple ships at the same time. You could have one Vulcan tending to maybe the Perseus if it needed an issue. Starfarer obviously working on our refining and fuel capabilities for the fleet. Um, that's possibly a weak link um, with a fleet this big. I don't know if one Starfarer would cut it, so this Starfarer may need to make some trips back to um if it can't if it can't you know refine gas out you know while we're in in on location and mm -hmm. turn that into fuel then it may have to make some trips back to stations and thus would need to take an escort um so that's a possible disadvantage weak link um last but not least finally is just a medical courier um uh Paulo medevac able to uh, to go and get people injured from any of my um groupings here take them back to the kraken cig has now stated that the kraken will come with equipped with a, a, a pulley you know a, a pretty kitted out uh medical suite probably mm -hmm. on par with something like a carrick i would think at the very least if not um you know, even bigger possibly, but that sure. combined with the medevac really covers all your medical needs. Um, overall, I think the biggest advantage this fleet has is it's, is it's, um, I would say it's signature strength. Again, that large signature between all these big ships are going to scare off a lot of would-be adversaries. You're going to have people scan this group and see a crack and they're going to see a Nautilus, which means, which is going to worry them already. They're going to see a Perseus. They're going to see, you know, so there's going to be a lot to worry about there. And then its biggest disadvantage would probably be that it's a pretty slow fleet. I don't see this fleet getting anywhere fast. So it does kind of need to rely on its like broad shoulders, so to speak, to say, hey, right. I'm here, stay away, because it ain't going anywhere fast. Um, the Perseus, Nautilus, and Kraken are all you know it's been stated that they're going to be pretty slow moving ships along with the starfarer gemini um they're all heavily armored um especially the perseus and nautilus so um yeah that's where i ended up i thought this would adequately serve the needs and fit the parameters quite well there's centered on a kraken it uses 50 people exactly um and it would definitely help with mining operations and profit generation there while providing a good bit of uh, combat support to a smaller org. One more fact I'd probably throw in is when I added a couple of these ships, I sort of relied on the idea that maybe a smaller org would not have a niche ship like a Nautilus or maybe even a right. Perseus. Um, they are rather expensive ships. And I thought that that may bring something to bear on a smaller org that they don't already have. That's speculation, yep. but it, it was part of my decision-making factor there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. I, I have three major things that I love about this fleet. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, one, <clears throat> your E-War ship, uh, your Sentinel. Um, I personally think that that's what that ship is for. Yes, it's a heavy fighter, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a harassment ship. I think that's what it's built for. I think that's what it's supposed to do. I don't, I don't personally think that that ship should be uh, majorly a fighter. It should be flown by somebody who's built to harass, right? So I love that you have put this in the role that it's supposed to be in. I also very much like that the Eclipse is that first strike defense. The reason I like that that Eclipse is there is because what you've stated you're using your Nautilus for, mm -hmm. right? It's a perimeter. Anytime that thing notices that, uh, uh, and you've told me this specifically, anytime that uh, that thing notices a uh, 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 mine is out of place, that Eclipse can go check it out. Right. There's going to be a terminal know. within the, the Nautilus, it's been stated, that you're going to be able to both set mines to be aggressive or passive. 
Um, you're going to be able to set friend or foe for them, and you're going to be able to see that their their basic arrangement. So, for example, if you want to do a big circle radius deployment of them, you'll be able to see that, and you'll be able to see when one of them starts tracking a target. And that right there is probably the most genius use of that ship. <laughs> it's essentially a a tripwire. Mm-hmm. Hey guys, we we've got an issue. Um, now, I personally think that. Your use of a Scorpius and a Hurricane are great. Um, your moles uh, allowing for the the smaller org to go ahead and and throw people into the moles, which will help make money faster. Uh, it's great. Mm-hmm. Um, I I love it. I I I feel bad that I didn't use two Vulcans and I could have used uh, an extra couple of people for maybe more mining. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> like, I mean, I use the crucible and it's great because I feel like it's going to be, well, let me, let me repair, counter that. that but, currently the crucible is sitting at 90 meters and can, and when it was originally concept, it was concepted to sort of service a Hornet. Yeah. It's, it, it I'm going to tell you right now, out of all the ships that I think will grow, I know a lot of people think the Endeavor is going to grow and stuff like that. I actually can see the Endeavor sticking at its 200 meters. Out of all the ships that's going to grow, I think the Crucible will grow. And the reason is, is I think they're going to push a Crucible. I'm speculating here, but I think they want to push a Crucible to at least be able to service a heavy fighter, meaning a Vanguard Warden. Even ships, maybe, I don't know if these are heavy, but even ships like the Ares, Ion, and Inferno, to be able to fit, heavy. yeah, and to be able to fit, I already did the measurements for this, to be able to fit an Ares Inferno comfortably in the Crucible Scarab, the Crucible would need to grow from 90 meters to, I think, about 140 meters long, which feels better for the Crucible anyway, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um just from a size standpoint, because there are things the Crucible is supposed to have that they haven't even accounted for. The Crucible is supposed to have drones again. So I don't necessarily right. think your choice of the Crucible is a bad one at all, especially with, with having a lot of small, medium fighters. You don't know. You may be able to park two arrows in the hangar bay of the Crucible at the same time. Yeah. Which that is, could be pretty is big. Hope. And yeah. remember, not only are you parking them in a scarab, you're parking them in an enclosed, shielded scarab. So True. if there were problems going on, they're going to be protected while they're being fixed. And um, they can get the, fixed up and back out yeah. quick as hell. Um, on the flip side, I think something that I didn't take advantage of, that you would be able to take advantage of, um, especially with your two buccaneers, is with your two buccaneers and hornets, you're going to be able to use the two uh, port uh, two starboard side internal hangers of the Kraken, yep. which have full capabilities. My current fleet load up loadout does not allow for that because none of the ships I have will fit oh, yeah, in there. That's true. And that is a bit of an oversight that I didn't really realize until I saw your fleet. So again, <laughs> it's it's all trade-offs and yep. the fun thing about this show is, you know, we're not saying our ideas are are totally right. I think sometimes when we build our fleets, especially for this first episode, I'm already going, Oh yeah, I would have done that differently. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the fun thing about this episode or, or this show is that um, everyone can look at it and come up with their own fa- fun ways to accomplish those goals. And and I would yeah. hope our, you know, the viewers of this episode post, you know, down, um, you know, in the comments, what you would do differently or any ideas you have. Post in the comments what you would do differently. Uh, and then we're going to have a section on our Discord, which you can find in the links. Um uh, for you guys to post your fleets, what you would have built for this. No answer is wrong. Uh, and the more you guys interact and post these, the more it makes us think and the more we all get to conversing and thinking about this. Uh, and man, this was this was a blast. It really was a lot of fun putting this together and having that 50 man uh, limit was really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it I really was. It, it was uh, a lot of fun, so though. Guys, and, and this is going to be a show that we're going to be able to pump out really quickly again because it's yep. using the Star Jump Fleet viewer. So expect these pretty regularly. Um, and, you know, feel free to post um, your own challenges to us and, and we might pick them for an episode. Go play with Star Jump Fleet Viewer, which is out right now. Yep. Uh, and build the fleet. 50 yeah. people. Um, you can get it Kraken on. Kraken has um, to be there. And uh, show yeah. us what you would do different. 
Yeah, feel free to post it anywhere, post it on uh, Twitter or whatever. Call it the uh, Fleet Builders Challenge. Um, you know, don't forget uh, you can access the Fleet Viewer at uh, StarJumpFleetViewer.com or Hangar.link. Both addresses will take you there. And uh, yeah, thanks cool. for uh, hanging out with us for this thirty minutes, guys. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Thanks, everyone. See you on See the next next, uh, next show. <laughs>